Reducing sweeteners is a huge step towards healthier eating, but it is just that, a huge step. It's not easy to navigate because sugar and artificial sweeteners are in literally everything. Plus, you know, they taste good and make us happy. Trying to cut back feels like it should be easy, but more often than not, it isn't. At least not for longer than a few days or maybe a couple of weeks. I want to share with you tips I share with my coaching clients on how to reduce sweeteners without feeling deprived. And I'm so excited to share these with you. Welcome to the Therapeutic Food Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Mitchell. I'm an integrative nutrition health coach, therapeutic diet expert, and founder of The Road to Living Whole. There are many different diets out there. It's hard to know which one is right for you with your chronic illness and autoimmune disease. In this podcast, I'm going to share with you the foundational pieces every single therapeutic diet out there shares and also how to use the best one for your particular diagnosis. If you've been looking for a meal planning partner, help navigating the complicated healthcare system and want to feel better quickly, I'm your girl. Grab your kombucha and notebook. Let's dive in. The average person in America consumes 76 grams of added sugar per day, which is 19 teaspoons and 306 extra calories per day. This does not include the sugar that is found naturally in fruits, vegetables, or grains. There is a big difference between sugars naturally found in food and added sugar and artificial sweeteners. The added stuff is where the trouble is found. Most people want to minimize added sugars to lose weight. While this is an easy target, it's usually a short-lived goal and harder than it seems to follow long-term without additional strategies. I think the first question that comes up is, beyond weight loss, why would someone want to reduce their added sugar and sweetener intake in the first place? First, let's talk about real sugar. 70 to 75 grams of real sugar consumed in 24 hours suppresses the immune system. So remember, the average person in America, and just a side note, kids usually consume more than this, which is crazy, okay, consume 76 grams of added sugar per day. So by eating the standard American diet of convenience food and sugary drinks instead of water and real food, you're suppressing your immune system, which makes you much more likely to get sick and stay sick longer. It contributes to inflammation in the body, acne, pain, etc. Even WebMD confirms this. And then let's, so let's talk about inflammation a bit. It will cause your arteries to stiffen. It will stiffen your joints. They will become painful. It increases your risk for autoimmune disease, heart disease, and stroke. Excessive added sugar also contributes and can even trigger depression. Excess sugar intake contributes to depression via elevated systemic inflammation. And this inflammation happens in the brain. So they're finding that people who eat excessive amounts of sugar also struggle with depression. And when you reduce the sugar, the depression symptoms ease. It also ages your skin faster. Excessive sugar breaks down collagen in the skin. Collagen is what keeps your skin elastic. By breaking down collagen, you're going to look older and it happens pretty quickly. I have been told that I have great skin and people often assume I'm in my mid-20s, which I'm in my late 30s and it's like, thank you very much. I honestly believe that this is due to the fact that I have eaten well and exercised consistently since my early 20s. Excessive added sugar also contributes to developing dementia later in life. Dementia, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's falls under dementia, okay, is now being called type 3 diabetes. And type 3 diabetes is when your blood sugar is elevated, but you're not quite type 2 yet. So excessive sugar intake leads to excessive insulin. Insulin makes the cells absorb more sugar. This causes damage to the cells, especially in the brain, leading to dementia as the years go on. Typically, the damage starts occurring 20 years before the symptoms appear. 
So prevention goes a very long way. Sugar also depletes essential minerals like magnesium. Excessive sugar intake leads to an elevated insulin level like we just discussed, and this combo decreases magnesium absorption as well as it causes the kidneys to excrete magnesium faster. Well, magnesium is a key, a key nutrient to stabilize blood sugar, and then it's just this vicious cycle that has begun. Reducing sugar helps ensure your magnesium levels don't get depleted more and you're able to absorb it from your food and supplements. This isn't even a full list of the negative effects of sugar. It's just some of the ones that I feel are the most important. Zero calorie sweeteners are not an alternative to consider, unfortunately, and here's why. Reason number one is they actually make you eat more. Your body expects calories when it tastes something sweet. When you consume foods and drinks with artificial sweeteners, your body actually gets more hungry and you eat more calories throughout the day than if you had just consumed the the food with sugar. It also stimulates your body to store fat and to gain weight. So it's completely counterproductive to what you're trying to do. Reason number two is that they destroy the microbiome balance in our gut. Artificial sweeteners were designed to be pesticides, and some accidentally got in a scientist's mouth. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but okay. And he said it tasted sweet. So then he goes and tells his other scientists, hey, taste this. It's sweet. And then they market it as a zero-calorie sweetener. Well, the bugs that pesticides are designed to kill also happen to be the same type of bugs that live in our microbiome and break down our food and produce nutrients and neurotransmitters. And so it kills off this beneficial, helpful bacteria while allowing the harmful bacteria and fungus in our microbiome to grow wildly and thrive. If you think it can't get any worse, they have been linked to a host of health problems, including decreasing red blood cells, increasing infertility in men and miscarriages in women, bloating, cramping, and other stomach issues, migraine, seizures, vertigo, and dizziness, blurred vision, rashes in the skin, breathing problems, muscle spasms, swelling in your face so it gets puffy, you know that puffy look that we all hate, sinus issues so it feels like allergies or like a sinus infection, it can cause slurred speech, hearing loss, loss of taste, red, itchy, swollen, watery eyes, joint pain, heart palpitations, anxiety, depression, memory loss, and that spaced out feeling. So yeah, artificial and zero calorie sweeteners are not an alternative. Before we go on to how to reduce sweeteners without feeling deprived, we need to talk about where sweeteners are used. We know that they're in candy and pastries and soda and those yummy drinks from coffee shops and all of that, right? They are also added to food, including most drinks in a bottle, bread, rolls, buns, crackers, pretzels, low-fat milk, low-fat yogurt, salad dressings, and sometimes even salsa. It's in so many things. Learning where they all hide and minimizing them takes time. I do not necessarily recommend going into your pantry and throwing everything away. If you do this, you'll feel like you have nothing left to eat, starve for a while, and then likely binge on all of the things that you threw away. This is a normal thing. Everybody does it. Let's go ahead and break this cycle. Here are five strategies to reduce your sugar intake without feeling deprived. Not being deprived is essential for sticking with it and breaking this vicious cycle, okay? Number one, make sure you're getting at least 100 grams of protein per day. Most adults do not consume 100 grams of protein per day, and recent studies have shown us that that's the bare minimum that an adult should be consuming. If you are over the age of like 18, you know, adult, you should be consuming 100 grams of protein per day. I know what all the vegan propaganda says. You only need like 44 grams of protein per day. That is literally only to prevent death. That is not enough to thrive. Okay. So step number one, one of the easiest things you can do to reduce your sugar cravings without feeling deprived is to be intentional about getting 100 grams of protein per day. This instantly reduces sugar cravings. And I'm a big fan of the results and I'm sure you will be too. 
Number two, start your day with fat, fiber, and protein. So here's how this works. Your blood sugar is highest in the morning. That's why they do the fasting blood sugar check, like your fasting blood work, in the morning before you eat. So if you break your overnight fast with sugar, you're going to elevate your blood sugar even more. Then Your body pumps out a bunch of insulin because its sugar is damaging the body. And then it pumps out so much that then you crash and you get low blood sugar. And then you eat sugar to bring it back up because you're shaky and don't feel good. And then this roller coaster continues all day long. By focusing on fat, fiber, and protein, you're getting calories and nutrition while stabilizing your blood sugar for the entire day. You won't get that roller coaster we just talked about. A huge blood sugar bonus is if your breakfast contains between 30 to 40 grams of protein. You'll feel satiated and it helps keep your blood sugar again from those huge spikes and drops all day. Another super easy way to instantly reduce your sugar cravings, which is super fun. Tip number three, don't go more than four and a half hours between meals. Many of the doctors I partner with have started using continuous glucose monitors. I freaking love these things. It actually makes my job a whole lot easier because the clients can see the results of eating the way that I recommend compared to the way that they were eating immediately. It's instant feedback and you know how food impacts your blood sugar. I love them. Here's what I've learned in the past year or so since they've become a popular tool. If you go more than four and a half hours between eating, And this has been with 100% of my clients using a continuous glucose monitor. Your blood sugar starts going wonky. Cravings for sugar skyrocket and then the the blood sugar roller coaster begins for the rest of the day. For me, this is easy. I very rarely go that long between eating. However, I realize that I'm the exception and not the norm. Many people can go all day before eating and then will binge all night long. So by being intentional about eating every four and a half hours, you'll find your blood, your sugar cravings diminish naturally. Tip number four, stop drinking sugar. You will be amazed at how much sugar and artificial sweeteners you drink all day long every single day. Tracking the amount of sweetener in your coffee, soda, bottle tea, flavor water drinks, vitamin water, energy drinks. Uh, what else do people drink? I don't, I don't even know. Is there, there more beyond that? You know what I mean, okay? When you start paying attention, you will be blown away. So one way to reduce the amount of sweeteners, real or artificial, that you're consuming in a day is to stop drinking it or at least be extremely selective. Here are a few ideas. Invest in coffee beans that taste good without anything in it. So I know that sounds really weird because it was weird to me. It was a really weird concept. Coffee was always really bitter. I went to a coffee expo a few years ago and I did a coffee tasting. Mind blown. There are coffee beans out there that make coffee taste absolutely amazing without adding anything to it. Even some that were almost sickeningly sweet without an ounce of added sugar in them. It was just coffee beans and water. Since then, I buy coffee that tastes great without adding anything in it. I will share the link to the one that I like. I'm not affiliated in any way. I make zero money from it. It's just the one that I drink and I want to share it with you. Another option is to drink filtered water and add a pinch of salt to that. People regularly tell me that they don't like the taste of water. Well, tap water is pretty gross. So invest in a filter of some kind. There are tons out there and usually there, it depends on your area, which one's going to be best. Okay. And then add some minerals back into it and That's as easy as adding a pinch of real sea salt. Other things that you can do to flavor it are to add things like cucumber or lemon or muddled strawberries, things like that, okay? You can also make your own herbal tea and experiment with different flavors until you find some that you like that require zero added sweetener. Tip number five, eat treats that are nourishing as well as delicious and eat them later in the day if you're craving them. So you cannot just completely abstain. You leave a void and something has to fill it. And sometimes you just want something sweet because it's an emotional thing. It's a celebratory thing. You're PMSing. 
You're just plain craving it. And that is okay. It's okay to indulge. Okay, just not every day. And my rule of thumb is that I will indulge in the healthiest version possible. There are a few ways to do that. You can make sure that they have, they're made with things that have fiber like coconut flour or nut flour. Make sure that they're full of healthy fats because fat gives food flavor. So the more fat it has, the less sugar you need. Okay. My next tip is to measure vanilla with your heart. I have a lot of dessert recipes between um, what's on my website and what are in my meal plans. And I taught cooking lessons for many, many years. And what I found is some people's taste buds were not as sensitive as mine to sweetener. And sometimes food didn't taste good, but we didn't want to add more sweetener. So what we found is by adding extra vanilla and extra salt made it like that's what did the trick for a lot of people. So measure vanilla with your heart. And then use sugar that is in its less refined forms. So using, you know, the cane sugar, like the real cane sugar that's still kind of a tan color, using honey, using um, maple syrup, using dates, you know, things like that. Not only, you know, especially if you're using dates and stuff, there's a ton of other nutrients and minerals in them. But if you're using the real thing, they taste sweeter with less. That's just kind of how it is. And it also gives you at least a little something back, right? And those are my five tips for ways to reduce sugar cravings without feeling deprived because we do not need to feel deprived. And in fact, I don't think we should. I feel like that's setting us up for failure instead of success. So quick recap, make sure you're getting 100 grams of protein per day. Start your day with fat, fiber, protein instead of sugar. Don't go more than four and a half hours between eating Stop drinking sugar and added artificial sweeteners and then eat treats that are nourishing as well as delicious and eat them later in the day. I hope you found this helpful and you know, if you loved it, shoot me a message, let me know, tag me on social media and head over to my website because I have over a hundred and like 36 recipes over there, including desserts and ideas for breakfast that fit into this category And just really simple recipes. Also, if you want to start improving the way that you eat, be sure to download my free guide. I have the link for it in the show notes. And if you are ready to get off of the diet for diagnosis roller coaster, I would love to help you with that through my therapeutic food framework. It is my one-on-one coaching program that is also a hybrid and includes an online course. So it's part coaching, part online course, all of the handouts, all the meal plans, a lot of the lesson plans are already in there. Plus you get one-on-one coaching for that guidance for where you are at and your specific struggles so that you are set up for success. You learn how to eat for when you're in a flare and when you are not because those are very different things and you feel better for good and you don't have to worry about like the next new diet out there that optimizes things or promises this or promises that because you know how to eat and you're feeling good. The links for all of that are in the show notes and I look forward to seeing you here next week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this episode helpful, would you do me a favor and help others find it by leaving a review, sharing a screenshot on social media, or sharing the link with a friend? By you sharing what you've learned, others are able to find this podcast and join our community. Be sure to check out my website, www.roadtolivingwhole.com for over 160 delicious recipes, a variety of meal plans, and a blog packed full of even more healthy living tips. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with me as your coach, you can schedule a free consult through www.roadtolivingwhole.com backslash health-coaching backslash. Until next time, friend. Bye.